Welcome to First Fill, I'm Phil, and I'm gonna fill you in about whiskey. Today we're talking about next level malts. I've already made a video about whiskeys for beginners, but this is about pushing you a little bit further, about trying something a little bit higher in strength, or something that's from a cask you haven't tried before. So, grab your dram, grab your seat, and let's... So we've got the Glen Morangi Nectar Door. Nectar Door? I think, I think this might be how you say it. Now the reason I'm recommending this as a next level malt, well firstly it's actually quite an approachable malt, like it's actually quite easy to drink. But it's aged in Sauterne casks, which is a sweet wine from Bordeaux, which gives it this kind of pineapple-y fruity notes that you're not going to get from those ex-bourbon and ex-sherry casks that this one has. And it also gives it this nice golden colour. You know, let's have something a little bit different on the shelf, something a bit sweet. And it's also quite available. Now with these next level malts, I wanted to have whiskies that are not going to break the bank. They're still a reasonable price, but they're sort of, you know, will push you in a different direction than the kind of starter whiskies that you generally get recommended. Uh, Glen Morangi is a Highland malt. It's aged in American white oak casks and then I think finished in the Sauterne casks. I think the ten, I think there might be a 10 year old version of this or 12 year old version where it says it's two years in the Sauterne casks. So it might be close to that. The ABV is 46% and the mood is, well, this one's quite good because I think it's quite good if you've got friends around, you want to try something that's aged and not your typical cask. So you'd be good on a whiskey night, but also because it's so fruity and light that it'd be quite good as a summer drink as well. It's on the nose. So I'm definitely getting um, lime, orange, pineapple, a bit of mango, coconut, nutmeg. I, I always think this one reminds me of, it's very tropical, you know, you've got the coconut and the pineapple. So on the palate, you've got honey, like a lemon meringue, and then a little bit of those kind of tropical fruit coming through as well. Ginger, almonds, definitely uh, citrusy on the finish. Get a little bit of this white chocolate note, some of that mandarin orangey, Great next level malt whiskey. Next one. So the Springbank 12 year old. Now Springbank is one of those distilleries that every whiskey journey you'll eventually come across Springbank and it's an absolute joy. This is from Campbelltown. And Campbelltown used to be one of the biggest whiskey regions in Scotland. You can watch that in my whiskey regions video. You can hear a little bit more about Campbelltown. Age, it's a 12 year old, so same as a couple of the others. Good amount of time in the cask. Uh, the ABV is, now this one is big, and this is why I call this a next level malt, because this is a cask strength whiskey. 57.1%. So quite a big whiskey, quite a lot of flavour. And the mood, this is definitely one for when you bring your mates around, they bring their whiskies and you have a proper whiskey night. You know, you have a flight of whiskies and you know, you finish on this one or you gotta have this in the mix because it's just delicious. This is probably not a whiskey I would have at a, a party and have everyone kind of just mixing it with soda and stuff. You know, maybe stick to some cheaper whiskies for that. This is not that type of whiskey. This is the one to break apart. You gotta make the most of the aromas, make the most of the taste that this whiskey provides. Ooh. Now because this is a car strength whiskey, I'm definitely gonna add water to it because I think that's the best way to experience it. So on the nose, berries, kind of a glazed cherry, almond, a slight chocolatey note, and on the palate, so on the mouthfeel, it's yeah very well balanced. Again, it's a bit at the front, mid palate's really nice, and then the finish, I can still feel that, taste that flavor now. Walnut, almond, and milk chocolate again. Yeah, there's a slight maltiness. It's sort of like a biscuit. There's a biscuit we have in New Zealand. I can't think of the name of it. It's got two sides and this sort of white icing in the middle. I mean, I'll, I'll put a picture of it up. Yeah, that, that's what I'm getting. Getting a lot of that actually. And the finish, salted caramel, 
tiny bit of licorice. It's really good. It's definitely a whiskey that makes you want to have more. So there's one more I want to recommend, and that is... The Abalua Abana. The region is from Speyside, so same as uh, Glen Livet that we did. The strength is 60.8, so this is a big one. Another cast strength whiskey. Also the cask, and this is the main reason that I want to put this in my next level malts, is because it really pushes you in this direction. Matured in Spanish Oloroso sherry butts. And I think it's done that for the whole time. Like, I don't think it's in, matured exclusively in sherry butts. So this is not like some of the others where they've been put in American oak casks and sherry sort of at the end for a couple of years. This is exclusively in sherry butts. So wow, there's gonna be a lot of flavor. The age is, well there's no age statement on this one. This is a non-age statement. Uh, would be great if it had the age, but this one doesn't. And the mood. I would put this in the same group as the Springbank. It's kind of one that you'd have with friends who are also into whiskey and you want to try something really delicious. But it's probably not something you'd give to beginners. Um, that's why I want this is my next level malt selection. Just say about the mood, I mean this is definitely probably a winter whiskey. It's one that warms you up. It's kind of like a you know a Christmas cake or um, a mulled wine. You know that same kind of vibe I, I get from the Abana. Add a little bit of water. So definitely add water to this one as well because it's 60%, bring it down, let that flavor open up. Um, and the good thing about cast strength is because you normally add water to the glass, it's kind of like you're getting a one liter out of something that's not one liter. So on the nose, cinnamon, you're getting some dried fruit. A more apricots than dates like some of the others. Get a little bit of cereal, sort of plum, kind of the plum skin. You know when you get plum you bite it and it sort of rips a little bit of just the skin. So yeah on the palate, yeah, a lot of those dried fruit notes, um, like the fig, raisin, a lot of spice. So cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, and then you're getting this, in the finish you're getting kind of this coffee, espresso, but also some of those dried fruits sort of lingering for quite a long time. So this is a really good castor whiskey and I hope you can add it to your collection. No doubt at least some people are going to disagree with my selection, you probably, some of them might not like, some of them you will like, some of them you will agree, not disagree, but you know this is just a platform to start off with that kind of introduce you to some of the directions that you can go on your whiskey journey. So if you like this video, make sure you like it. And the thing is, my whiskey schedule has been a bit sort of erratic, so make sure you hit the bell button so you know when my next video is coming out. Above all, share your whiskey, share it with mates, share it with friends, and enjoy it. Beauty.